Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good evening, this is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Lutheran Church. It is Tuesday evening, the 29th of December, the year of our Lord, 2020. And tonight our psalm is the 85th psalm. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let not not them turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet, righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground, and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before Him, and make His footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening. Remember not, O God, our transgressions against us, and record not our sins in your book, but cast them into the depth of the sea, and remember them no more forever. Impute to us the obedience of your Son, Jesus Christ, who fulfilled all righteousness for us, and gave himself a sacrifice for our sins. Let us live for his sake, and enable us to walk worthy of our calling. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And tonight we continue with our study of St. Luke's Gospel, the second chapter, verses 39 through 40. And this is preceded by the account of, of course, Simeon and of Anna, and now they're on their way home. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town in Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So far the text. A couple of interesting words in here. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required, uh, everything, that word completed what was necessary, what was in obedience to the law, they returned to Galilee, to their own town. And the child grew. The child grew and became strong. The King James says waxed strong. Um, actually, it's interesting, the Greek word there is became filled. Filled with strength. And he was also filled with Sophia, filled with wisdom. And also, that word again, that word filled, is fulfilled. He was completed in wisdom. Not just became more wise, as some translations put it. But he was filled with wisdom. The child, even then, filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. The grace of God, the charis, grace, mercy, they were attributes of his. He was overflowing with it. It was seeable. Even though he was just a child, it, his, his form, his, who he was, attracted grace. God looked upon him with his favor, with grace. His Father who is in heaven. So the God of grace poured His mercy, poured His grace upon Him. 
And it's interesting because guess what God does to us? He pours His grace upon us for the sake of Christ. Everything God did for, for His Son, He does also for us. He pours His grace upon us. And of course that occurs in Holy Baptism, where we exchange, there's a great reversal going on, where we who are sinners become declared righteous by Jesus. We die to ourselves in baptism. We are killed literally, and we are raised into new life in Jesus. So the grace of God then is poured upon us, and we are forgiven our sins, and we are given the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord, in some translations it says, was upon Jesus. Well, it doesn't really say pneuma in this text. It doesn't say it in the Greek. But people understand that the grace of God is connected to His Holy Spirit. The grace of God is brought through the Holy Spirit. Forgiveness of sins is given in baptism. The grace of God is poured upon you. And you receive the Holy Spirit. And because you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive renewal. You are then a child of God once again. You see, we are all born into sin and into death. Ever since our first parents, Adam and Eve, fell, all of us are born unrighteous. There is none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so what occurs in baptism, God then kills that old Adam in us. He breaks the birthright the devil won. You see, the devil was your father too. The father of the flesh, the father of sin, the father of death. But God in holy baptism takes you and kills you. And that's how you break a birthright through death. And then you are born again afresh into God. You become a child of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. The Holy Word connected with the water, paid for by the blood of Christ, and there you become a child of God and receive forgiveness and you receive His Holy Spirit. Now, does that mean you can't walk away from the faith? No. Adam and Eve were born to be eternal, and yet they walked away from the promise of God by being disobedient and rebellious. And so people today can still do that. Unfortunately, people do that. But God says, don't. I love you so much, I sent my son for you. He died for you. He paid for your sin. And for the sins of all people of all times, even those that refuse to acknowledge Him. But God loved you that much that He sent His Son. And then God turns around and says, I pour my grace upon you, heaping and overflowing, so that you might be one to give that gift of grace to others, that you might show them mercy, that you might show them love and compassion, that you might be an instrument of His Word. And so, that's our message for tonight. Also, I, I love this thought that they return. After this whole ordeal, they returned to their own lives. And what did they do? They went back to the vocations God had given them to do. Just like when you come to church. You receive God's Word. This Sunday, you'll receive His sacrament as well. But you return to your vocations that you might be living His Word and Him living through you. That's all I have for tonight. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you His peace. God bless you. Have a great night in the Lord.